Hello, hello, hello. All right, let's see, where is this live? It is live, perfect. Let me start with the intro. This is the intro, timestamps. Zero, 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 intro. Hello everyone, how's it going? <clears throat> Hope you're ready for a little live stream today. I'm heading out of the area, um, but you guys will get <clears throat> a couple of extra videos uh, that I've been preparing for the last few weeks. Uh, and one of them is going to be on this device right here, the Eco Audio. We're going to be taking a look at it today, um, a little bit more in depth uh, for the moment. But it's uh, quite a nice device. I personally have enjoyed using it. Um, as far as recommendations, we'll get to that in just a second. But you know um yeah so just be patient but for now let me just post wherever uh, dumb phone live stream march 2024 uh, once a month that's what we're trying to do with these live streams uh, if you have any questions make sure to put it in the <clears throat> um in the comments and i'll be interacting with you guys um so whatever questions you guys have you're more than welcome to come um, let me just put it in one more place and then we get started with the eco, um, couple of updates on other devices. I have the cat S 22. If anybody wants to ask any questions or whatnot. Um, and then we're going to be going over a couple of Reddit posts that are uh, quite important. I think, um, you know, there's a lot to discuss. Especially in the last few weeks, a lot has happened. We got a couple of announcements. Um, nothing yet on some of the phones that I was hoping to get even more details, but you know, it's just it is what it is. Um, okay, so uh, let's get started today. We're going to be taking a look at the Eco Audio. So let me give its place to it. So this is the Eco Audio. It's not a dumb phone technically. Um, it's technically a um mp3 player so like as a as a technical thing it is an mp3 player it comes from a company called eco or ico um let me show you guys where it is so this is the company um so we are at two minutes so two minutes let's talk about the eco audio um so the eco is technically an mp3 player and it can have um Essentially, it says that it has chat GPT and all this kind of stuff, like, you know. Um, so these are the active buds AB02. Um, it has Spotify, so that is true. And I'll be showcasing a couple of the other things it has. AI voice assistant, 45 languages, music standalone streaming, personalized sound. Uh, and it does have a SIM card slot for 4G and for calls. Um, you can go more into how it looks and what it does. Um, and we will get to, you know, a couple of things here that I think are pretty cool. Um, there's a couple of reviews already. I'm going to be releasing my review soon on mine. And there is like an eco store as well. Here you can see a lot of more like other, you know, little things like the specifications, yada, yada, yada. But this device, as you see right here, has a has a screen so uh, let me see if I can uh, improve that yep that's better thankfully so let me go a little bit closer yep so the eco brings two um, earbuds right here and I think it's good you know that it has that but at the same time it does have a touch screen with different apps you can use this to kind of navigate um, and you have to like hard press to go to like a specific place, right? So you have right there, I have inserted a SIM card. So if you see right here, it's probably not super visible. Oh, I don't even have my light. My bad. Well, now that's a little bit better. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, I was, uh, not cognizant, but yeah, so it does have a, um, it does have a SIM card on the side uh, right here. And yeah, as you can see right there, and it takes a nano SIM card. Uh, so right there, no issues. And um, yeah, so 
let's test a couple of things. And again, if you have any questions, you can put it in the comments. Um, so I, I've tried phone calls. So I made a couple of phone calls out there and it's, it's okay. Um, so when you hard press right there, the menus are a little bit mm, iffy or, you know, they're just not the best, uh, but you can, you know, type whatever number. And when you call, it will have like an Android, like, you know, call right there. Um, I have, I have found it to be decently re reliable. When I place a call, I would say about 60 to 70% of the time it goes through because I am actually un unsure as to whether they design it for phone calls. Um, it does receive text messages without any issues as well, but you know, it does leave some things to be desired. It's not perfect. Um, let's go back. Um, let me see if I can connect to the Wi-Fi because there are some features that do not work reliably without the Wi-Fi. So there it is, you know, the Wi- oh, darn it. It's going to take a little while to, to connect. Hopefully it can. Um, but it does have the mobile network, which is home. I'm using a US mobile SIM card on this. Do I consider this a dumb phone? Definitely not. It, it's more like for sure a MP3 player that has some extra added benefits. Um, there it is. Hopefully it does allow me to do that. But let me show you a couple of the store right here as the eco store, which has, you know, a decent amount of like helpful things, but it won't blow your mind. Let's let's put it that way. Um, and I think I'm going to have to figure something out because the Wi-Fi, it, I'm in, in a room that doesn't necessarily have Wi-Fi. <laughs> so it's like really hard to get it here. I have blocked pretty much all devices from accessing Wi-Fi in my home. So let me try again. If not, I'm gonna try hotspotting from a smart device here. Hotspot. All right, so obtaining the IP address. If not, we're gonna go to my other device here and just to show you i guess it'll be good to show you like a little bit of how painful it is to use some of these things like typing is really painful it's not really nice um so let's see if it recognizes um, new network right here all right Yeah, it's not even recognizing the network here with the Jelly Star, which is a problem. If we really want, I, I really want to show you some of these features because some of them are really cool and others are, you know, kind of like middle. They're not that great. They're very mid. Like the Chat GPT one is, it's not good. Um, but uh, let's see again. Yeah, it doesn't have good compatibility. Held device is fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find it, guys, but sadly it's it's not allowing me to. But when it's working, um, let me turn it off and on again, see if that works. Um, but when it's working, I would say that it has some valid very nice features uh, i'll try to show one i guess in the meantime see if if it works so there is uh this speak easy um feature and essentially it's kind of like a translator right so if <clears throat> you want to even get a memo or a translation it will listen to uh, what you have to say y yo puedo hablar en español y debería traducir todo lo que yo digo. There it is. So, boom. As you see, it translated everything that I said from Spanish to English. And it does have other languages um, readily available. So, Arabic, you know, Chinese, Croatian, Czech, Finnish, Tagalog, Dutch, um, you know. So again, it has quite some utility, especially if you're in a different country. I think that's um, something that 
can be good. Then you have dual mode, which is kind of like a back and forth conversation. So you can put one earbud um, on a person and then the case translates, or you can do the dual earbud mode, which again, I think it's actually a good feature, especially if you're in a different country. And then you have live mode. I think this one needs data though. So it does it you know, automatically and very quickly. So this feature is actually very good. If you're thinking of using this essentially as a translator plus MP3 player, I mean, if you go to a different country, I think it, it can be very, very good in that sense. Uh, then you have Spotify, of course. Um, it's probably not gonna open well because again, uh, the data is probably not working well, uh, but maybe it does, so there you go. Uh, you can sign in with your Spotify, Spotify premium account. I don't have one, so sorry, but it does have the ability to do that. Uh, then you have like a regular music offload, like like offline mu music mode, which you can use to, you know, kind of like go over settings and different things and your music, you can play it. You can have a timer if you want to, you know, stop listening to music every so often. Uh, this one is underwhelming. Uh, the chat pal is like a chat GPT version for the for the phone. <laughs> but um, who won the NBA championship in 1997? As you see, he's thinking. The Chicago Bulls won the NBA NBA championship in 1997. And then you can kind of like go and do it. Now, it speaks on the earbud as well. Um, I cannot showcase that to you. Um, maybe I'll try to figure it out if I can do a recording somehow. <clears throat> but um, let me tell you that this, this specific quality of the translator here on the ChatGPT engine is... A quite lackluster so if you're asking questions maybe like just on the go um and i believe this is based on gpt are you based on gpt3 okay well, misunderstood me a little bit there um but i'm pretty sure it is based on gpt3 like it doesn't seem to be computing you know at a very high level um or maybe it's even using a uh oh okay Oh, it's catching everything. I think it needs silence in order to process. I'm based on OpenAI's GPT-3 model, which is the state of the art language model. Kind of not true, but that's okay, you know. So yeah, they're probably <clears throat> doing like a local LLM and with the processing power, I mean, it's not necessary. Um, to do, but if you want to ask a question or, you know, kind of want to get instructions on something or kind of like answer and ask questions, it's, it, it's doable. Maybe, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, let me move on to like a little bit more of kind of like the messaging functionality is broken uh, here. Let me show you something. So this is a message, a technic technically. Um, so here. Um, it just allows you to read the messages, but it doesn't allow you to actually reply unless somebody sends you a message. Uh, here, let me see. Let me send it from a tester phone. Um, uh, here. Uh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to send a message to it, and it's going to receive it. It's going to have, you know, no problem receiving it. Um, or so far, it hasn't had an issue re receiving it. Let's see, I did not get a message. Okay, I think it's it's struggling right now. Um, I haven't had issues receiving it. Oh, it connected to the Wi-Fi, yay. Um, but the messaging portion is the one that it's like the, the least reliable. I'm gonna try calling it, see if it gets something. Um, no. So this is something that I've found like that happens. I'm going to reboot the device and probably when it comes back, it's going to make a sound and it's going to be like, oh yes, you know, you did, you did get a message. So sometimes the signal kind of goes away and I found it kind of spotty in that sense. So it's not perfect. It's, it's not, you know, it's a very, it's a decent idea 
but the implementation is not there yet. So if they're listening, I think they need to do a couple of upgrades to how the system works and, and all of that. Um, but you know, it's, it's pretty good. Like it's, it's decently good. It's not going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to be your daily driver personally. Um, I know I saw a lot of people like kind of like enthusiastic about it. Like they were like, Oh yeah, this could be my daily driver. Um, I don't think so. I really don't. It's, it's not there yet. Um, and the battery life is definitely not there yet. I think probably a day at most, um, per my testing so far. So, um, yeah, if you want an MP3 player, I highly recommend that you look at something else. Uh, and if you're trying to spend the same amount of money, you'll have a better chance doing the Sony, um, I think it's AW105 or something like that. Um, I think that would be a better use of your money. And like, there it is. Boom. Ha ha. See, uh, it received two messages. Um, but I cannot show you. Let me see. Hopefully. Nope. Okay. Let me try to send it again. I'll send it again. Hopefully it gets it, but essentially it receives the messages. Eventually you will see everything, but I wouldn't rely on it for like, you know, life or death. Um, the store is another thing that is neat. Um, it does have a lot of, mm, you know, like it does have a lot of apps, um, for, especially for audio. Um, so, but there was one that I wanted to test and I need to download, which is the GPS. It uses Gaia GPS. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it's okay. Maybe, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that's, that's just what it is. Um, the screen, I think somebody asked a question about it. So the screen, I think it's like 1.5, maybe, um, mil, mil, like, like diagonally, 1.5 inches, like, you know, diagonally. Um, I haven't looked into the specific, let me see, hardware. There it is. Uh, 1.8. So it's a 1.8 AMOLED screen, 3.2 two six PPI with 500 nits. That's the, um, that's what it is. So I'm going to, I'm installing right there, the Gaia GPS. I haven't tested that. Somebody asked a question yesterday as I was kind of like, Oh, what, what have I missed? And I went to the store and they do have a GPS app. I, I don't think it's going to be super reliable, but I think it's going to be, you know, good enough probably. So yeah. Um, okay. The earbuds, uh, so Sean uh, asks, um, are the earbuds at least pretty pretty good quality? I would say it's like a six, seven out of 10. Um, it passes the test, but it's not going to be your best bet. You know, like um, uh, the nice thing about it is, um, I don't want to interrupt the, <clears throat> I don't want to interrupt the download because when you interrupt the, the download, it doesn't actually, you know, do it. But essentially, the ability is that you can pair other Bluetooth headphones with it. So if you have a really nice pair of Bluetooth headphones that you like, you can pair anything with it because it has Bluetooth 5.3. So you can just go to the settings and connect any other set of headphones. I know it kind of defeats the purpose because, of course, this brings the headphones with it. But the quality of the headphones is not amazing. It's like it's not like a 9 or 10. Uh, the fidelity is decent, is good enough. Like the tips are, are nice. You know, um, again, it's it's just kind of like a AirPod knockoff quality, um, and yeah, it gets the job done. But it's not like super wow, the best the best thing um, I have ever had. So yeah, um, that's the uh, eco. Um, audio buds, like smart buds. So again, if you have any questions about this one, make sure to put it there. Um, my closest comparison to this would be a Jelly 2. As you see, open is about the same size. Of course, closed is definitely smaller, but that would be like my closest comparison to it, right? So the Jelly 2 and the, uh, it's kind of like not, this one definitely is a little bit bigger. But of course, this one has access to more apps and whatever you want to load to it, you can do that. But hey, if you're looking for a compact device, the Jelly 2 is, is good. I've actually been using the Jelly for the past um, few days. 
And uh, let me show you something like um, something that I think it's needs to be corrected also. Uh, but uh, let's see. Oh, let's see if we can go. Yeah. So here is my screen time last week on the Jelly 2. And you see a big jump there, but I'll explain that. So an hour and 44, 51 minutes, 13 minutes that day, one hour and 20, two hours and 16. Perfect. And this one was like four hours, but because three out of those four hours were like on Google Maps. So I didn't know that when you take a um, trip on Android Auto, it just counts all of that time as your screen time. So here, for example, it's like three hours and 51 minutes, which is like two hours and 39 were maps and 36 minutes. So three hours out of those 51 minutes were um, on things that I wasn't actually looking at the screen. I was just listening to people on Zoom and also doing like, you know, map stuff like when I was driving. So I think personally, the uh, Jelly 2 can really do wonders, and especially if you get rid of a lot of other apps. Uh, this weekend, this past week, I needed a couple of extra apps, so I had to switch my SIM card. Uh, but yeah, definitely a good device, you know, a good competitor. Um, and for the Eco, it's more of like, do you want an audio file device? Uh, it does not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so I don't know if you can really call it an auto audio file device. Whereas like something like the Walkman, right? The Sony Walkman does have that, you know, nicety with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, DAC adapters, like. I mean, that's just just much nicer um, if I can zoom in. But like here, it has two holes right here, uh, one for the 3.5, one for like other, you know, kind of like headphones that are more higher quality, yada, yada, yada. Once this downloads, I will go come back to it. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see a different device, a uh, little update on the Tick Mini. Um, let me go to the Tick Mini. Let me put it at six, 20 minutes. Okay, well, we did 20 minutes on the Eco Audio. That's pretty good. Tick Mini M5. So <clears throat> the Tick Mini um, has been good. I've been keeping testing, putting a test SIM card every so often. No issues. It works with pretty much all the networks and everything that you want to do is full Android. So maybe this is also another competitor since, you know, the screen is about comparable. Um, if you really, I mean, probably a little bit bigger, um, but I haven't had any issues. I continue to work. It continues to work with, with AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon. So, so far so good. Definitely this device is also around the same price. So if you go to Amazon, let's go to Amazon here. Um, take no M5. So here I'll show you. So yep, right there. Take Mini M5, three hundred dollars. Um, as you see, I purchased one, the one for review. <laughs> um, since I always purchase my the devices and more bands, more compatibility. I mean, this is a full, technically a full smartphone and a dumb phone body. Um, but I, again, you see right there, I mean, for the same price, $300, I would say get get a Tick Mini M5 instead of getting a Eco Audio, even though the Eco Audio is kind of like more niche and has a completely different purpose. So, you know, that's kind of like the thing. Uh, okay, we have some little questions right there on the side from Trout. It says, I'm looking for something that works with Boost Mobile. Um, for Boost, you need something that is compatible with either the T-Mobile network or the AT&T network. So something like the Tick Mini can work. Um, I believe the Jelly 2, you shouldn't have any issues as well. Or Jelly Star, this is the star with the little, you know, kind of like light LED lights on the back. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's something that um, I hope, um, yeah, I hope it works out. Okay, all right. Um, Let's see, uh, this one will allow you to use a lot of the other apps like Android Auto and that kind of stuff. Um, I think there's a question about that. Looking for a phone that will let me use Google Maps and Spotify on Android Auto in the car, email, signal, download parking apps since pay machines are gone. Any suggestions? Uh, yeah, so if you go to Dunphone Finder, um, I believe I have a new tool in there. 
Uh, let's go to dumbphonefinder.org. I believe I, I just enabled this Android Auto. Maybe I didn't. I haven't. Okay, so I have it on my table, but I haven't enabled it on the Dumbphone Finder. I'll make sure to do that today. Uh, but essentially, yeah, if you're looking for Android Auto, Spotify, and that kind of stuff, Tick Mini M5, uh, Jelly uh, 2, or Jelly Star, and um, let's see what else. Something that is running full Android. Um, let's see, smart feature phone apps, smartphone. Probably the Fig, the I'm sorry, not the Fig, but the um, Xiaomi F21 Pro. If you have access to that, if it's here in the United States, that will not be the case. And I think that's about it. Um, yeah, you're kind of limited to the Tick, Jelly, Palm Phone, um, and uh, Xiaomi F21 or F22. Those would be your options as of right now for Android Auto because the Cat S22 Flip doesn't allow for that um, since it's using Android Go. So a little bit of a bummer there. I actually wish it did. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's your question, Wamba. Um, yeah. So again, if you have any specific questions, let me go over a topic that I think it's uh, of interest for a lot of people. Um, let's go. Oh, it's installing. Perfect. Okay. Let me go back to this just briefly so that I can see how the GPS works. I'm not really thinking that it will <clears throat> be amazing. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like a little bit, I, I'm not putting my hopes up, right? Um, let me show you a couple extra things on the Eco Store before we do that. Um, you can delete the APK. Uh, let me go to keep charging different devices uh, since, you know, we're testing. Oh, by the way, we'll have a, um, we'll have a uh, giveaway uh, coming up soon. So that's, uh, yeah coming up probably by the end of April, April, March, March, April. Yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, that, that will be the next giveaway. Um, here, give me a second. This thing is super hard to get out. I hate this cover from the, what do I have? What do I have here? Maybe a pen. The covers from the um, Sunbeam F1 is so hard to get out. Oh my gosh, like, uh, I mean, I, I try not to close it all the way, but this time it closed all the way. It's charging right now. Um, so hey, there you go. Uh, let me show you more things on the Eco Store, what else it has. Uh, so it does have some games. Um, I wouldn't rely on them, it's, it's just one of them. Uh, Ski Safari 2 um you also have ebook apps which essentially means like audible um so if you want audible platforms right there on the efficiency you have i didn't look at this one the other day i looked at the ebook um, i wish i had like a podcast one but i guess that's what the audible is one uh, and on the media it has apple music and it has um you know oh of course it, it's not connected to the wi-fi see that's Little, no, it is connected. Okay, let me go back. And then we'll try. Um, but what I saw was kind of like notes and that kind of stuff. And yeah, so that's kind of like some of the things. Uh, let's see if it loads on the efficiency. There it is. Pomodoro, Zoom, uh, Speakeasy, ChatPal, and a Chinese app called iFly. Uh, and on the media, it has Spotify, Apple Music, e Eco Music, Tidal, and Yandex. Um, and then on tools, I think it was just the GPS. I think, yes, I believe so. Lifestyle, let's go to lifestyle. Calm, I think it's a meditation app, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's what it has available. No ADB, even though it has Android, I haven't found a way to do it. Uh, so if I go here and I go to developer options, um, to system, and I go to about, and then I go here and I try to like, you know, tap it seven times. It doesn't do anything. So I'll find a different way to do it. Uh, they do have updates. I receive an update in the time that I've been testing. So in the past six days, four, five, five, six days. Yeah, I think so. Um, but that's kind of nice. All right. So let's look at the GPS. I 
again, I don't think it's going to be amazing. I'll probably test it today. I have a, I have a trip that I have to do. Um, but um, this has like two gigs of RAM and it's running like some s s certain like Android. Oh, there it is. Look, haha, <laughs> I got a message. So the message finally came. Uh, and this is the only way that you can reply. So the only way that you can reply is, you know, all of these tester numbers right here. The only way that you can reply is if you get a message and you tap it, you really have to tap it at the right time because you have to get to this actual Google or like messages function. Uh, then it has swipe, which will be easier to do some of these things. Um, and I wish it had uh, kind of like voice to text, but I haven't found it yet. So there you go. Uh, I think it requires some sort of sign up. I think that's what I saw. Yes. So Gaia GPS. Okay. So I'm going to have to create an account. Give me one second. And I can show you how terrible it is to um, put passwords in this thing. Gaia GPS. Oh, okay. So that's like a reputable thing. It's like offline. Oh, there's like premium and stuff like that. Wow. That's kind of interesting. Okay, let me, uh, I'm creating an account offline, well, online, but just like offline from the device. Okay, let's see. Sign up. Oh, okay, I need more characters. I think my camera went off. So we're going to talk about some things that are not camera related. Uh, so, yeah, I think my camera went dead. Not good. Um, but let me... Uh, I'll we'll come back and we'll talk about other things. So I think this is just a this is a Google Maps um thing. Okay, so let me show you uh, maybe on this camera right here um, how it works. So let's go. Oh, okay. So it shows the Android keyboard right there. So it shows the Android keyboard. Uh, that's kind of nice. So there is this other engine that um, I, there's this other engine. Oh my gosh, this is so tiny that they use in order to put passwords. That is like the worst keyboard I have ever seen. It's like a horrible layout. So I personally think they should get away from that as soon as possible. All right. One, nine, five. Let's see. Let's, oh, well. I'm already signed up. I just need to sign in. Hopefully it recognizes that. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit of it. I don't know why my camera went dead. I think the, the battery maybe. I don't know. Um, okay, let's go back. Sign in. I'm going to try to see if I can type on this extremely tiny keyboard. But yeah. So it does have this Gaia GPS. I never used this, uh, but it, it seems to be based on OpenStreetMaps, um, which is nice, actually. I, I, I prefer OpenStreetMaps, but I don't like that they're charging for stuff when OpenStreet is very free. All right, let's, I'm going to try, see if it works. Cool. All right. Um, okay, let's switch. In the meantime, that my camera recovers somehow, it's a little needs more power or something. I don't know. Um, let's go talk about something that I think all of you have asked: the minimal phone Indiegogo. Um, and I'll go over a couple things. Um, they are at fifty-two percent right now. Uh, let me note this on the. Um, so this is 34 minutes. Let's talk about this. We'll come back to the thing. Okay, so it says unknown error. So um, it's not logging me in. I'll try to figure it out if I can log in and show you guys what it looks like. But I doubt it's going to look any different than the online version, which is street maps. Um, let me see. Did I put a capital? I don't know if I did. Unknown error. It just keeps saying it's an unknown error. Minimal company. Discussion. Um, I'll address some quick questions that I saw. So I had the Jelly Star and the battery died really fast on idle, like 
to yes uh, so i i personally turn off everything um on the on the jelly star and one thing that i found was um making a massive difference was the location so check out your location and check out your um battery saver so if you put it on battery saver it, it should it should like work pretty decently i mean it's not going to be perfect but it should work you know it should make it work maybe that's what i'm trying to say okay all right um let's talk about this so a couple things um i addressed it on a post the other day um so they're trying to create an e-ink qwerty keyboard device uh, this is not a minimal device as the name says <laughs> it's very very capable of doing everything you want so you know it's an android device and that's it but i do see a couple of things i'm like okay i i do not understand what's going on here some sometimes uh, so i really hope you know that i really hope to see more demos because otherwise i really can't recommend you know the phone uh but let me show you a couple questions that i found like interesting right so hey uh, android support they say oh sorry so on android support they say it's going to have android auto right it's going to be compatible google maps spotify it will support t-mobile um so let's see it's going to have the mediatek helio g80 so that's that um, they say that another demo is coming, so hopefully that is true. I would like to see a better demo. Um, and then let's see. I wanted to see. There was one that, yeah, so this one. This is from the project owner. From uh, It says the minimal phone will be manufactured and sold regardless of this goal being reached. So I'm a little bit like, okay, so if you don't get to the 500,000, you're saying that you, you have the money to do all the molding and all the stuff besides, you know, some of these things are expensive, but I mean, Hey, if they have, if they have the money, right. And they're saying like, they're going to produce this device regardless of, um, whether they raise the money or not. Okay. Well, they, they probably have funding from somewhere else that, and they don't necessarily need this 500, uh, dollars. Another thing, I mean, kind of like another, another thing that I saw was that, um, let me see, where is it? Uh, I saw someone comment something that I was just like, yeah, you know, that's, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, maybe it was way, f way further. Um, oh, here's the other thing. So they're saying they're going to have a North American version and an international version. So I'm okay with that. A lot of phones have that, but I'm like, that's double the expense, right? Different bands, different certifications, different support, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's life. Um, they are exploring 5G. They're exploring all these things. Follow the project. I will say, wait for them to do more demos because right now when I look at this video, um, the demo that they showcase, like, I mean, for example, like right here, I don't necessarily think that that's not showing me them using it this one also is not showing i mean yes they seem to have a prototype some sort of device um when you zoom in here like it's kind of blurry you know like i'm just like can you show me a device that it's working you know that kind of stuff um there's still 18 days left so you know i'm, I'm still giving the benefit of the doubt um i i think there's a lot of hurdles to to go over <laughs> still but if they show a demo of a working device and prototyping and like you know that kind of stuff then yeah consider it like i mean you know it's it's uh, definitely a, a competitor in the space so that's something that you know to to kind of like look into it um and i know a lot of you have had questions about it uh, like i always say give them the benefit of the doubt look into their track record and look into what they're actually producing the images look nice. I mean, the everything looks nice, but it's just like, well, if you don't have a full prototype, then you can't really say we're going to ship this. Right. And, but they're working on it and hopefully, hopefully it comes to fruition, even though a lot, there's a lot of like mm, doubt, skepticism, you know, that kind of stuff into it. Uh, let me go to a couple of Reddit posts that I found interesting. Um, let me see. There was one that I found very interesting. 
Okay. All right. Um, so I've been trying to get this one. Um, not being able to yet. This is the Philips E6810, which is a Xiaomi F22, but with a camera in the back. Uh, not the Pro, so just the F22, uh, regular. Um, and then there was one more that I wanted to... Uh, I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it. This one. This is the one. Okay, so um, I want to talk about this one because I think it's quite a sentiment right now, especially with everything that. Um, yeah. So like, let's 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 talk about it. So it says, "I would love to have a dumb phone." I've been eyeing a couple of them and lurking on this sub for the last month, but I think I'm finally accepting that even a KaiOS or older Android is not an option for me. There are lots of reasons, but mainly maps, regional public transport apps, music, and communicating with people with phone numbers for other countries because they use probably WhatsApp. Also things like notes, budgeting app, calendar, security of the KaiOS, old Android devices. Um, so... I want to talk about this because I think a lot of people need to accept this reality that sometimes a dumb phone may not be an option for you. And that's sometimes difficult to accept because, you know, you want to kind of have that nostalgia and kind of have that lifestyle and that kind of stuff. Um, but sometimes it's just not possible and you kind of have to be okay with that. But I think that doesn't mean that you cannot do something in your life to stop relying on digital sources as, as often or as, you know, as much as you like uh, let me see here so what can you do what if you cannot get a dumb phone right for whatever reason there is a lot of reasons there's a lot of valid reasons a lot of it is work related a lot of it's travel related a lot of these things are like hey you know i'm i'm trying i want to have this lifestyle and whatnot but the reality is that you just don't know you just never know what can happen how it's going to happen and and how it's all going to work out. And you have to be mindful of that, right? So I think that when you accept that you cannot have a dumb phone, then you have a couple of other possibilities. So the first one is, you know, just using the tools, right? So for example, get brick.app. Like if you have an iPhone, you know, you have this device that changes completely how you use it. You only have the brick version and you have the not Bit break version you use an nfc tag you tap it right here's a little demo that they put in there um so you open the brick app you choose the apps you know that you want and then you tap it and then once you go to the distraction and you try to open it this is a distraction right so that's a very good way to to work out hey i want to have this possibility and I want to have this system or this tool, but I don't want to have all of the other like, you know, distractions, but I may need it because I need to communicate with family or maybe I want it for some downtime or whatnot. So again, you have that ability um, and they explain what makes what makes it different. I mean, you know, I, I agree with their system that uh, sometimes the screen time apps are just easy to bypass, whereas this is more of like, a, hey, like this actually works, right? Uh, you you tap onto it you you use it and then you don't you don't have the ability to access the distractions but you have the ability to access whatever tools you actually want to use um, the next one is unplug of course similar concept but definitely more expensive so as far as i know they're not doing a lifetime subscription anymore they're doing like 49 a year and three years um, which is pro it's a big problem in my opinion because when you compare it to the one-time payment of $49, I mean, that's kind of like I can get a year of Unplug or I can get $49 and get the same functionality. So they're going to have that. Uh, and then the next time is the next thing that you can do is like screen time passcode with a family member. Um, so... So the family sharing allows you to like set up, like you set up a screen time passcode with family sharing is like essentially somebody else sets it up for you and they have access to it. So you don't have the ability to um, essentially bypass it because somebody else set up the password, the password with family sharing controls. So 
those are some ideas that you can use um, in order to um, use that. The other one is clear space app. Um, so this one is a little bit of a different system. So essentially when you open the app, it asks you to kind of like essentially wait 60 seconds and have that and it will change you know the length in which you uh, use it another one is one sec i think one sec.com no no one sec app this one's available one sec app yes that's what it is so this one sec app that's how it works like essentially has the ability to wait and it then it tells you like hey these are the attempts that you've been using instagram and whatnot it makes you take a deep breath um and it allows you to you know essentially use your phone but give you the intentionality of like oh maybe i don't need to do this right now um ali abdal has talked about this app um he's a popular youtuber this free app saves me 20 hours every month of course you know they're gonna put a lot of marketing around that but um i think this one also has just one it has a free version and it has a paid version i think the paid version is just a one-time payment so again i think it's it's a good solution that can like remove that mindless scrolling and replace it with decision intention based um kind of like realities that you want to use okay um let's see i'm still trying to sign in here i don't know if it's going to let me um but yeah um oh i didn't have to sign in okay well that's oh, 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 for okay Okay, I saw the map. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, yeah, it just says an unknown error has occurred. I don't know if you need to use the... Okay, I don't know what's going on. But I saw the map. I'm going to try to see how I can um, get into like the um, GPS version here. Tap and hold label to change it. I'm trying here. Oh, well, that was nice. No. Okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out how to log in. Probably I'm going to need to go out there, get a better signal, yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's see if my camera wants to collaborate with us today. Um, yeah, I think it was going to have a little bit more. <clears throat> Um, of time. Okay, perfect. Let's go to. Oh, okay. There it is. Yay. It works again. Perfect. Um, okay. What else do I want to show you? So here's how the Gaia GPS looks. Actually, I think I can just download it. Um, well, it will be a different device. So that's. I could download it on like a smart device and use it like that, but it's not really showing you how it works in the device, right? But. It loads Gaia GPS and technically it should have some sort of um, ability to give you GPS directions. I'm definitely not going to be super optimistic about it, like I said before, but we'll see how it works out. Okay, cool. Um, more updates. Uh, so let me bring another good friend, the Sunbeam F1 Pro um, and also the sibling Sunbeam F1 Horizon but it's the same phone just just a little cheaper on the sunbeam f1 the non-pro version um let me charge the cat s22 we'll finish with that i do have an update on that um but yeah so sunbeam f1 again i've been testing you know a couple of times here and there um really really good device i really highly recommend it very fluid very nice to use and they just continue improving it, which I think it's like just the mindset that you need to find with a company. Like if you're really trying to find a phone that it works for you, um, I think you need to find a company that um, you trust and that you want to have kind of like for a long time. This one has navigation, ways, like, you know, all of those good things. Um, it does have group text messages and it does have a lot of other like little features like so like navigation right there. You know, you can search for. Uh, different things uh, let's go to red robin boom right there 
you know, and it will give me some directions in the meantime. Boom, right there. 81 shows me the directions, shows me what I have to do, you know, all the different things. Um, and then you can go out. And the nice thing is that the directions, so they have two directions, the navigation, the regular navigation one um, that they build, that one works even when you close the phone. Um, and the kind of like the other one, the ways, uh, no, you have to keep it open. So it's really nice to save battery. You put the, the extra navigation. Um, so good question right there from Faust. It says, what ways do they keep improving beyond bug fixes? Do they add new apps, tools that are requested? So they're working on a couple of extra things besides the bug fixes, um, but they really need more feedback from the community. So I like if you have an app that you want to use, uh, not necessarily like a super smart app, but like something like a tool. I think like they're willing and they're they're looking into integrating a lot of the calendar. Um, I believe they, they were trying to look for syncing options, which is something that a lot of people have requested. Um, but yeah, you know, they're trying to like work within their boundaries and like work with, with the devices that they want. Um, but if you want like a lifestyle change device, I really think this is a good option. Um, let me see. What else? Um, here, let me unlock this. Um, I've been testing also tester SIM card as well. The BlackBerry, um, this is the classic and you know, it doesn't work reliably. Sadly, I wish it did, but it doesn't work reliably anymore, uh, here in the United States. Um, so, you know, I, I'll think, I think this is the last, uh, time that I'm going to be testing because yeah, it's kind of dead, dead like the coverage is not there and kind of like, um, yeah. So it's kind of like not there and, and kind of not working anymore. So it's kind of a bummer. It kind of doesn't work anymore uh, and it doesn't have those uh, capabilities to, to really like, you know, answer like phone calls and send text messages reliably. Um, I've been testing with different SIM cards and nothing seems to work. Uh, sometimes I get something and sometimes I, I mean, I mean I'm, able, I'm able to use it on Wi-Fi. That's, um, let me see here. Um, yeah, so I'm able to use it on Wi-Fi uh, and it has some like really nice, really nice features like on Wi-Fi and like that kind of stuff, but you know, uh, not, not too much, not too, not too available, um, for, for many things, sadly. Um, okay. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. Um, was planning to be here for probably like an hour, an hour and a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you guys don't have any questions, there's, uh, uh, maybe a couple of devices I should talk about that are coming in. So what's upcoming in the, um, digital minimalism world, that kind of stuff. Um, let me go to screen capture again. Uh, right. And let my camera rest for a little bit. I think it, why is this giving me a lot of sounds? I think maybe this is charging or no, is, is this? It's not charging well. So let me go charge it uh, in the back. And if you guys have questions, um, I will be right back. Um, so put the questions in the comments below and then we can chat. Okay, let's see it. Cool. All right, so let's go over. Um, okay, somebody asked a question about a phone that I don't know. Is this what you're talking about? Like the Unihertz Tank 2? I mean, this is just a smartphone. Is that what you're talking about um, right here? Um, Franco, like this is just a massive, <laughs> massive device. Um, which I mean, it's, it's kind of cool, I guess. Like, you know, it's very rugged and that kind of stuff, smaller device, but I mean, you know, Hertz, oh, it has tank mini. So oh, yeah, cause that's, that's the latest, that's their latest stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, my thoughts are, Hey, if, if, if you need a rugged device, I think, you know, Hertz has a good reputation so far in delivering. Uh, this one's a mini phone, so 4.3. I mean, that's nice. You know, um, it's definitely smaller than 
uh, the super mega, you know, phones out there. And of course you had the Jelly Star, which is even smaller than that, you know, smaller than whatever little device they have. Okay, stop. I don't, I don't need help. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I think they're going to deliver on it. And at uh, 269, it's just, yeah, it's just a small device, rugged. You know, if you need it for construction, I feel like that's a, that's a good idea. Um, okay. Um, all right. We do have some questions. Jason, uh, early thoughts on the MC-01. I think it's a flop, honestly, um, personally. So <laughs> I have not seen very good reception. Oh, MC-01, you mean the MC-01, the, the, the keyboard one. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, if the MC-01 came to market, that would be just like, yeah, I, I would buy one. I think it will, it will be a hit. Um, <clears throat> it has everything to kind of work and have a lot of the, uh, the, the ideas, like it's in the right place. I, just, I really don't understand why they didn't do it um, personally. But uh, that's kind of like, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to get enough money from the MC-02, which is uh, something that Punk uh, talked about. Uh, they talked about the MC-02. But, um, yeah, a lot of people are not happy with it, you know, like uh, because, again, it's just a smartphone and it doesn't have anything. It doesn't offer anything extra besides um, like a design change because the reality is that this is, um, you know, it's an operating system that's just based on graphene OS. Um, I think there was a YouTube video. Let me mute this tab so I don't get any, you know, unwanted, but I want to see the comments. Yeah. So there was a uh, punk MP02, NC02 here down there. authority video. I thought it was quite telling, um, of what people think. A lot of people are like, just get a Pixel 6, 7, and start gla graphene OS a lot cheaper and more user control on their privacy. You got a look, lock bootloader, extra security, and Titan M chip. Privacy does not have to be expensive. This phone has the right idea, but there are better options out there that don't cost much. Too expensive, unless it has military great secrets to keep private. Um, then uh, somebody else is like... Um, expensive burner phone some people are like hey i definitely want it thank you for covering this yada 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 and only people who have never heard of calyx divest lineage or graphene os will buy this which i agree you know after uh paying 700 dollars for this you've been punked of course the youtube comment can be a very mean section so like you know I'm, take it with a grain of salt to a certain degree but like it's true i mean like you go get let's go to amazon.com you will get a Pixel 5. Let's let's get a Pixel 6a. You know, a little bit more recent. You get a Pixel 6a for $184. You put Graphene OS in it. Let's go for it. Pixel 7a. You know, even newer, 286. You buy a brand new, $400. You're not even close to the $750 price point in here. Which, um, yeah, I mean, like honestly, why would you get a device that is so expensive when you can just get a cheaper device that you can install it yourself? You go to Graphene OS um, or Calyx OS. I believe they even uh, so Graphene here. Let's go to Calyx. Um, I think in Calyx you can even buy them, right? So like, um, get Calyx OS uh, pre-installed. Uh, if you join the Calyx Institute and you get a uh, Pixel 6a, you know, you support the their foundation or whatever. You pay $700 um, and then subsequent years, $10. This is kind of like, hey, I want to essentially have it pre-installed for myself. But if not, you just go back and you install it yourself. I mean, literally, they have all of the documentation and you can get any of these devices. Uh, and then, of course, they have notes. Um, I believe that the uh, end of life, anything pixel 4a5 down it doesn't work or they're not going to re release more updates um, but you get anything from pixel 6 up or even pixel 5a right now um, you get the latest version and i mean that's it i feel like that's kind of like the anti you know um argument for the um for the uh punk mc02 which is like hey look like um you guys definitely need 
to figure it out something because this is just way cheaper to just do on your own. Um, then another thing for the MC02, even on the Reddit, um, I thought that I see I saw some some of those things. Here's punked. Um, let's see. Um, oh, by the way, if you have a punked MP02 and you haven't updated, you should read. Uh, you should update it because they just delivered um, the MP02 um, pigeon update that actually restores its functionality. Um, let me see. MC02, where is it? Uh, somebody was talking about how they had uh, so issues. Like, okay, download a QR reading. So the camera doesn't read QR codes. Okay. Um, and okay, so here's a comment that explains the situation that I'm trying to find. So have not turned this thing on in over a week, but given the false advertising on Google apps, they tried to install F Droid the day the other day. I tried to overcome the mistake I made by buying, but since the meager Appy store is an F Droid fork, I was asked if I wanted to update F Droid. When I said yes, as I could not care less if that break their app Affy deities. Um uh, the device merely ignored the request and the install. How do you install the F-Droid? How do you get around it? Da, 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 da. Like, I mean, there's a lot of issues installing some apps. Uh, and then, um, aha, here's one. Hi, all. Decided to post all the apps that are for not currently working. Weather, Bug Elite, Life360, T-Mobile app, Edna Health app. So, again, this technically has the ability to run everything, but clearly it's not running. And, um, oh, and again, None of my paid ones work. Support has blown me off for days. There's zero on their FAQ about any of it. Going to look up the return policy. Uh, 800 bucks to be their test pigeons. Yeah, that's not good, right? So they paid $800 with over 200 for a VPN subscription. A lot of things are not working. And again, my argument, you can just buy a used Pixel for less, have better hardware, de-Google it, install Graphene, and use free firewalls for whatever you want. So I don't think it's going to be a very good phone because, again, um, yeah, so like a lot of the APK files, a lot of the, the things that they said that, that it was going to work is not working as they intended it because they're running Graphene OS. Uh, honestly, the app EOS is just a fork of Graphene OS. And um, yeah, it's not going to work perfectly even with GMS Wizard or like, you know, the things that they're trying to sell you on the subscription and that kind of stuff. So sorry, but not a good device. I would do completely something else. Also, let me show you this. This is a wild image right here. This is like wild. Who does this? Like this this man is what? Doing yoga and looking at a YouTube video? <laughs> or like, I really don't understand uh, what the graphic is trying to convey here. I mean, it's kind of interesting, but it's like so wild to me. Um, a little bit of the graphic right there. Uh, but yeah, again, <clears throat> I personally think that the MC02 is not going to be a good phone. Uh, there's a lot of other um, abilities, you know, um, yeah. So it's just kind of like not not really they're not really looking into uh they're not really looking into um giving the people what's what's best. Um yeah. So yeah. Uh Peyton, um we talked about this a uh, few <clears throat> moments ago on uh, the 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 minimal company. Uh, we we talked about it. Uh yeah, at, at 35 I put the the um I put the um, the timestamp there so you can revisit. But essentially, we talked about it. It's right here. And uh, I mean, I think that they're just promising a lot of things. You know, it's going to have wireless charging. It's going to have QWERTY keyboard. It's going to have an e-ink screen. It's going to have like a lot. I think they say even NFC. Maybe I'm, I'm mistaken on that one. But they say that even if the minimal phone uh, will will be manufactured if this goal is not reached, um, which is kind of like, okay, so you probably have money besides the 500,000 and you're actually making strides to this. But again, my TLDR or TLDW uh, is if you don't see any other demos, like they say that they're going to put other other demos out there. If you don't see a lot of demos out there, don't 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 support it, in my personal opinion. Uh, if the phone ever comes out, um, I think 
I'll buy it for sure. I'm definitely in the target demographic. So I wish them well. And I, if they continue, I mean, if they make like a lot of demos and the prototype gets a lot better, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think you should, um, yeah, you should back it. Like, you know, if I see a very nice working demo, um, and, and there's a lot of functionality and you see uh, an advanced prototype, yeah, go for it. I mean, I think it's going to be a good device, but, uh, until I see that, you know, no, not, not going to be my cup of tea. Okay. Um, I think the cat should be charged. I'll be right back and I'll bring the cat so we can talk about the cat s22 uh and there's a question about it so we'll we'll, we'll go over that too i charge enough it's not super charged but it's good enough so i can talk about it a um, couple things to uh, keep in mind. So Nicholas got a CAT S22 as a transition device. Um, okay, so first let me go to a guide on the CAT S22. If you're technical enough, CAT S22D Google. I think it was on XDA. Um, here, give me a second, guys. I'm getting a phone call. I hope it's not the, I hope it's not what I thought. Give me a second. Sorry, I was uh, trying to call. I, I have some people coming today <clears throat> to see some some things, but I, I don't know. That is what it is. Okay, so a couple of suggestions for the CAT S22. Um, so I highly recommend that you look into um, getting it de-bloated. Um, if you know how to do it, if you don't know how to do it, then try to do the best that you can do with ADB. Um, but here's a guide um, on how to root the CAT S22 flip on version 30. Um, you know, these instructions uh, are for Linux, but they're adaptable to, to Windows. And there's a full tutorial in here, how to get to fastboot, how to get to like all of these things. Uh, but yeah, so first things first, I definitely recommend that you maybe upgrade, modify, unlock, um, a lot of your cat, so how to root it, you know, take a lot of that just bloatware that it brings. Uh, so personally, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good option, uh, for <clears throat> starting your journey on the cast 22, then installing a minimal, um, launcher would be next. So something along the lines of like, um, O launcher or here, let me look it up for you guys. So <clears throat> oh, launcher. Uh, so just very minimal, very easy to use. Uh, so that will be kind of like a second thing or even a Niagara launcher. So a Niagara launcher, another really good one. <clears throat> it's very minimal, very easy to use. Um, and I personally think it's, it's again, another good um, home screen that you can use. Um, and it has a couple of extra nice features. Like when you're playing music, it shows like, you know, right there. So personally, I think it's a good one. Um, and uh, what else? What else uh, for the CAS22? Um, you know, learn how to use ADB app control. Remove all that stuff that is unnecessary. Um, so you go to AD ADB app control and 
you connect the device and then you start like destroying like literally everything that you don't want you know so um, very good to use and you you can you can learn very quickly because it's a graphical control um and those are my kind of like first things i would i would i would think um and then uh let me go here and then um battery saver mode um use it be be a friend with it um so battery saver mode will save you a lot of uh, headaches so here is the cat So, um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, that's kind of like uh, uh, some things that you can do. Uh, what else? Um, I mean, enjoy it. Install the apps that you need. Like for, for me, I always need the transit app because I, you know, do a lot of transit. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like um, just be mindful of your usage. Install whatever you need to install. Another app that you should install. Here, let me go back to this one is uh, old tt9 uh, this keyboard is going to make your life way easier um, and uh, this is how it's going to look so it has predictive text so i personally highly recommend old tt9 you can get it on github an easy droid and also on f droid um, very good very nice i personally think it's a, a good um, keyboard and they have, I believe, a lot of languages. Yeah, 20 plus languages. So Bulgarian, German, French, English, Spanish, Norwegian, yada, yada, yada. So again, they're working on it constantly. Um, there's a lot of volunteers that are dedicated to the project. So um, those are kind of like some easy apps, easy configurations that I can definitely think that are um, helpful and very good for, for you. Um, okay. So let's go another question. Sunbeamwireless.com. Um, somebody asked that or the light phone, right? So, hey, here we have the light phone. Wait for the light phone three or get the F1 Pro. Um, I think it definitely depends on what kind of like resources you want to use and how you want to use your phone. As you know, the light phone is definitely more basic than the F1 in certain terms and certain, you know, capabilities, uh, but it's still quite, quite good. It's still quite a good phone. And I personally use it as my personal device, right? Um, so I would say if you need to get a phone today, just get the F1 Pro or the F1 Horizon, uh, which comes in like a nice blue color. I personally think that's going to be your best bet for one of the best devices right now. But if you want, um, if you want to, you know, kind of like, if you don't need a phone right now, right away, I would definitely give um, the Light Phone 3, just wait for it. It's going to be a good device. And I think if you're trying to do already a lot of that, um, kind of like waiting period or like lifestyle transition change you know completely your outlook then i think it's going to be way better oh sorry um had to sneeze right there <laughs> but yeah so that's um a little bit of it um i don't see any other questions from you guys so i'm gonna wrap it up in the next five minutes uh, but thank you for joining me for another live stream. Um, not a lot to discuss this month. Um, I guess another thing that we didn't discuss is let's go to the Mudita forum. So, um, yeah, so this is the Mudita compact. They still haven't gotten extra information. Um, we plan on showing more sneak speaks within a month. So that came yesterday. So probably by April, they'll have, um, more info and pictures like you know that kind of stuff on the mudita compact so probably they're slating a release for um i think they're slating a release for probably the summer i mean that's a good time frame to to release um and in the meantime it's kind of just like a waiting game at this point um there's a couple of other projects that i've been made aware of um and 
the um uh yeah so like um the there's a two two other projects that i can't tell you about but i think are very good and they're from people that are in the community so that is something that is looking forward to you know i'm really looking forward to their development uh, they're probably release is probably maybe like later this year at the earliest and if not 2025 uh, but I'm really excited. I'm actually alpha testing one of them and hopefully I'll get permission to share a little bit more of what these people are working on. Um, but I'm really, really excited about that. Um, there are two projects that are probably going to also try to work together. Um, these, these two companies, hopefully they work together. Um, and um, yeah, it's just going to be good because it's like people that are in the community, that are listening to the community and that are trying to make the community better. So that's always a, that was always a plus. Um, yeah. Uh, Nacion Jeep. Uh, so just about the light phone and three's coming soon. No, no. The, the, they're going to announce something this year, but I do not expect that the light phone three will be here until 2025. So your investment uh, is worth it and it's fine. And also the other thing is that the... Um, Light Phone 2 is going to be continued to be updated. So they're not giving it away. They're not, you know, um, giving up on it. They're going to be uh, quite um, focused on on doing the, the best that they can. Um, so hopefully you found some insights today on the Eco, uh, more of like a big demo uh, for the device. But yeah, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. I'll be interacting with you guys. I usually check in. I'll be gone probably for the next um, two weeks um, or so. Uh, yeah, just because. Um, let's see. One hour, 10 minutes. Conclusion. Just uh, get that conclusion out there. Um, yeah, so I think. I think you know um, I'll be I'll be gone, so I'll be a little bit more um, less uh, less present, less you know on the socials or like you know replying to the YouTube channel, that kind of stuff. Won't be on Reddit as much because um, I'm gonna be on vacation. So you know when I go on vacation, I usually don't take my work phone or any smartphone, so I'm not connected to anything. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you guys have questions, just put them there, and I'll I'll get to it eventually. Uh, we'll do a live stream again and a giveaway probably by the end of the month. I'll be giving away a lot of the devices that I don't see myself using or going to be making extra videos on it uh, in the future, like the Fig Mini X or uh, Sunbeam F1 Horizon. I'll be giving one uh, that one away because I'll definitely keep the Sunbeam F1 Pro. Um, the yeah there's a couple of extra ones i think there was a question that i did not address um yes there was uh so what do i think about nokia Kai OS? um it's decent it's good enough um nokia is not really interested in listening to the community so they're not gonna make a lot of updates into that so that's kind of like just what it is uh then we have another one here from i am vin can you ask your friend at nokia why they're not adding hotspot feature in their 4g dumb phones i can tell you because they don't care. Um, <laughs> I've talked with my friend at Nokia about this at HMD now. Of course, like they're going through a restructuring. And he essentially just says that they're just trying to cash in on the on the on the there's a Nokia Barbie phone coming. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a flip phone and uh, it's going to be making it from from H HMD. Uh, so they're going to be like doing a little bit of, a, um, you know, HMD collaboration with Barbie uh, and it's going to be a flip phone. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be a flip flip phone uh, or if it's going to be, you know, truly a flip phone that is uh, just a smartphone as well. Right. So we don't know yet. Um, it's a little bit late for it, in my opinion, but it is what it is. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I've talked to my friend and they, they say like, hey, when they do the retro devices, they're just looking to cash in. I mean, on the nostalgia and stuff like that, they're not really going to update it. They're not really going to make significant improvements to it. And while it is sad to hear that, it's kind of like just the reality um, of, of what Nokia and HMD are doing now. It's like. Hey, we release the device, we give it some pump and like, you know, whatever, da, 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 put marketing out there. But, you know, 
they're not really looking to listen to the community and make something better. But hopefully, maybe, maybe coming soon, there will be something better out there for you guys. Um, okay. Now, Trout asks, uh, what do you think the best phone for would be for Boost Mobile? It depends on your needs, but something along the lines of the Cat S22, Jelly Star. And if you want to, you can use a Sunbeam F1, you know, F1 Pro. I personally think this device is really good and it's one of my favorites. Uh, so I, I think that that would be probably around your best, um, you know, best devices for it. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Nacion Jeep says there was an update yesterday for the Lightroom 2. Hopefully battery lasts longer. Yeah, um, look into your GPS priming settings. Um, that's something that has been draining a lot of battery for a lot of people. So just look into that um, and look into like other optimizations like turning off Bluetooth, turning off Wi-Fi, like, you know, things like that. Um, okay. Um, oh, last thing, I guess um, I can showcase to you guys. So I do have one more thing um, on my sub stack. I talked about it. Um, so um, I do have a very... Um, offline, I guess, or, or printed. I have a printed edition of my newsletter coming out now in April 30. So if you're interested in um, getting one of those, so essentially what I'm doing is I am compiling all of the articles that I have done from January all the way to March for my newsletter. And um, if you are interested in getting a printed version of that with an offline only article, you can go ahead and uh, pre-order it right now on my website. Um, so if you go to store on the josebriones.org slash store, you will see all the things there like the physical book or the ebook version, the audiobook version, and also the offline uh, Q1 uh, booklet. Uh, you will see a couple of extra promotions here and I'll showcase a couple of extra things. Uh, but yeah, if you want to support in that way, that's something that you can do. And, you know, if you're not interested, that's okay, too. No problem. <laughs> you know, I don't get offended. Um, but uh, if you want to hear more from me, I do have a newsletter, and it's called Moving Offline. It's on Substack. So if you look for Moving Offline uh, Substack or, you know, something like that, Jose Brion is Substack, uh, you should be able to find it there. And I do write about a lot of different things. Uh, sometimes I produce podcasts on it and that kind of stuff uh, and give you tips and tricks for, um, you know, just the different things. That's definitely not me. Definitely not me. Um, but yeah, cool. Awesome. Um, thank you for watching today. Thank you for the support as always. Um, hope that today's eco showcase was helpful to you if you're looking into that device and if you, uh, want to have other devices or, you know, anything else, I'll be, um, showcasing some of those in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next time.